God, you are good. God, you are good. God, you are good. God, you are good. I need help. 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 So do they. So do they. So do they. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As you came in, you were given both an outline as well as a bookmark, and both of these are going to come in handy in just a few moments, so I would encourage you to keep them available and nearby. Hi, I'm Max Locato, and I'm a prayer wimp. <laughs> I doze off when I pray. My thoughts zag and then zig and then zag again. Distractions come at me like a thousand gnats on a summer night. I do not know if attention deficit disorder applies to prayer, but if it does, I suffer from it. <laughs> Some people don't. Some people have de developed a habit of prayer, the heart of prayer, even a language of prayer. Some people would rather pray than sleep, but for some reason I've always struggled to stay awake when I pray. They are the Navy SEALs, the SEAL Team 6 of intercession. The PGA, the Prayer Giants Association. I'm a card-carrying member of the PWA, Prayer Wimps Anonymous. Maybe you can relate. It's not that we don't pray. In fact, my first point is this. We all pray. We all pray. We all pray some. On tear-stained pillows, we pray. At the side of the flight of geese, we pray. In grand liturgies, we pray. Quoting ancient devotions, we pray. There is something within us that wants to pray. We all pray. Statistically, more people will pray this week than will exercise or had sex, statistically. Statistically, one in five atheists prays every day. I can't explain that. Hedging their bets, I guess. <laughs> but we all pray. We all pray some. But we would all like to pray more, better, deeper, with more conviction, more consequence, more fire, more frenzy, more faith. We would all like to pray somehow differently. But there are a couple of problems. First, there's the problem of life problem of bills that have to be paid, the problem of diapers that have to be changed, the problem of deadlines that have to be met. We'd all like to pray more, but when? When? That calendar is like a tiger. Pounces on our good intentions like a tiger on a rat. We'd all like to pray more, but when? And we'd like to pray more, but why? Why? Why does God want to hear from me? Honestly, I can't get the cable company to call me back, but God does. <laughs> the doctor doesn't have time for me, but God does. Why? And then there's that issue of una unanswered prayers. But I asked for healing. Healing didn't come. I asked for restoration, and I still ended up in divorce court. I asked for strength, and I still feel tired. I think the unspoken hesitation about prayer is that we fear God is the ultimate heartbreaker. I don't want to get jilted again. Oh, prayer. The paradox of prayer. 
Well, it helps to know if you have struggles with prayer that you're not the first. In fact, the original sign-up list for Prayer 101 included the names of some pretty impressive folks. John, Peter, Andrew, all the apostles. Because when one of the disciples went to Jesus and asked for help with prayer, all of them just said they needed it. Here was their request. They said, Lord, would you teach us to pray? Interesting, don't you think? They never said, Lord, would you teach us to walk on water? Never said, Lord, would you teach us to keep people spellbound with a speech? Lord, would you, would you teach us to vacate a cemetery like you can? This is the only tutorial that the disciples ever requested. After three years with Jesus, they said, Of all the things you could teach us, Lord, would you please just teach us to pray? I wonder why. Why the request for prayer? Well, it might have something to do with those unbelievable promises that are attached to prayer. You've read them and scratched your head just as I have. Jesus said, ask and it will be given to you. If you believe, you will get anything you ask for in prayer. Jesus never said, work and it will be given to you. Or if you organize a committee, you'll get everything you do and everything you want in that committee will happen. But he, he, he attached such unbelievable promises to the simple act of prayer. He said, if you remain in me and follow my teachings, you can ask for anything you want. And it will be given to you. Jesus made such promises. It caused the disciples to say, well, Lord, teach us to pray then. And on top of that, Jesus gave commands to pray. On one occasion, he looked out and he saw people so troubled and struggled, struggling with life. And he turned to the disciples and he said this to them. He said, pray to the Lord. Pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into the harvest. We would expect Jesus to turn to the disciples and say, organize yourselves, raise some money, come up with a solution. But he said, no, just pray. Struggling people on this side, he turns to the church, to the disciples, and he says, now pray to the Lord. If I'm one of the disciples, I'm looking at Jesus thinking, wait a second. Why would you want me to pray? Can't you do this yourself? I mean, who are you? Why would my prayers matter? These aren't theologians. They don't wear halos. They don't play harps. They're not angels. They're tax collectors. They're fishermen. They, they got callous hands, bad breath. They're just guys. You'd run into them in the convenience store, gassing up the pickup truck. They're just regular guys. And yet Jesus turns to these disciples and he says, listen, here's what I want you to do. I want you to pray. And he all but gives them the divine credit card. Have you seen this promise? He says, when two of you get together on something, on anything at all on earth, and you make a prayer out of it, my Father in heaven goes into action. No wonder they said, Lord, teach us to pray. Because he gave these promises. He issued this command. But perhaps more than anything, Jesus himself prayed. William Barclay in his commentary on Matthew says, the real reason to pray, Jesus prayed. Nothing more, nothing less. Your Bible is, is dotted with references to the, to the prayer life of Jesus, like this one from Mark chapter 1. He went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. Yes, Jesus prayed. Yeah, he made the stars, but he prayed. He he was the ruler of the universe, and yet he prayed the exact representation of God, the author of life, 
and he prayed. Prayed before he slept. Prayed before he ate. Prayed for the sick. Prayed for the downhearted. Prayed for his friends. Prayed in a garden. Prayed in a cemetery. Prayed on a path. Prayed out in the open. He prayed. The disciples must have seen this. Where's Jesus? Well, he's gone off to pray again. Hey, I'm just getting up, Peter. What's for breakfast? I don't know. I'm looking for Jesus. I think he went off to pray again. There was one occasion he went off and he prayed all night long. Why? The day had begun with the news of the death of John the Baptist. John the Baptist, his cousin, had been beheaded by that spineless Herod. Jesus came to the disciples and he said, let's just get away and, and rest. But he looked over his shoulder and here come several thousand people following him. And yet rather than turn them away, he taught them all day and he healed the sick among them. And when it came time to eat, they didn't have any food. And so he multiplied bread out of that boy's basket. What an exhausting, taxing, difficult day. If anybody deserved a night's rest, it would have been Jesus. But when the evening came, he told the crowds to go home. He told the disciples to get into the boat. And what did Jesus do? Well, the scripture says that he went up onto the hills by himself to pray. Peter and John and James are looking at each other. There he goes again. There he goes. He's just always praying. And it must have made a difference because you remember the story. How a storm came upon the Sea of Galilee and the boat was bounced around like a beach ball on the beach. And yet when Jesus came off the mountain, he wasn't afraid, he wasn't troubled. The scripture says the disciples were in trouble far away from land. A strong wind had arisen and they were fighting heavy waves. And about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water look at that walking on the water he left worn out he reappeared invigorated he left exhausted he reappeared repleted strong why he came down off the mountain like a conquering king he never broke stride he just kept walking right on to the water like there was an invisible bridge beneath the water he just kept walking and then when he saw the wind and the waves and the frightened disciples he just spoke to the wind and it got glassy calm and the disciples looked at each other and they looked at him and I'm thinking that that's what was behind that request Lord teach us to pray like that teach us to pray like that Teach us to so stand in your presence that when we come out of our time of prayer, we're not like we were when we went in. Teach me to come out of my mountain of prayer with authority, with confidence, with conviction. Change me, shape me, empower me. Teach me to pray like that. That's what you want. That's what you want more than anything else, my friend. What you want is a place you can go to find power and strength. If you're like me, you've gone to the wrong places. You've walked away disappointed. But I believe at the heart of your heart is you want to talk to God. You were made to commune with God with your maker we'd think it'd be easy I guess you know it we've already learned that prayer doesn't require a special place or set of clothing or, or lotion or incantation and yet we still struggle with this with this privilege of prayer it might help you to know that the blame is not entirely upon us. The devil deserves a lot of the blame. 
He loves to keep you out of your prayer closet. He loves to keep you and me off of our knees. He loves it when we're trying to fix everything on our own. But boy, when he sees us bow our head before the Heavenly Father, he turns and he tucks his tail and he scampers. The scripture says that when we pray, we fight with weapons that are different from those the world uses. <laughs> we fight with weapons that are different from those the world uses. Our weapons have, look at this, power from God. Whew. And this power can destroy the enemy's strong places. You see, Satan has come into our lives and he has these little strong places, these little, these little grips on us that he has laid a hold of parts of our lives. But as we pray, those begin to be released in the name of Jesus. They begin to be released in the name of Jesus. And Jesus can do more in one moment of his decision, of his sovereign will and kindness than a counselor can do in a dozen sessions. Or a preacher can do in a million sermons. That's why Satan doesn't want you to pray. But here's the good news. God will help you pray. He's on your side in this. For every desire that you have to pray, God has a million more. He does not stand in the distance and say, come on, get it together. You know where God is in this? Jesus said it this way. He said, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. And if you hear my voice and open the door, what church? Say it with me. I will come in. Hmm. And I'll eat with you. And you will eat with me. Let the promise of that verse sink deep into your weary heart. Where is Jesus right now? He's on the threshold of your heart. That warmth that you feel, that hunger that you feel, you know what that is? That's the, that's the knock of God on the door of your heart. He said, if anyone, anyone, not if, if any good person or any righteous person, but if anyone, last I look, we all qualify as anyone's. If anyone would just open the door, have you ever opened a door? Do you know how to open a door? Prayer is the hand of faith on the doorknob of your heart. Prayer is just the hand of faith on the doorknob of your heart in which you open it up and you say, oh, come in, Jesus. Come in. Kitchen's messy, but come in. I didn't clean up, but come in. I'm so glad you're here. I don't quite know what to say, but come in. <sighs> just come in. Jesus says, if you'll just do that. Look how he honors the most meager of gestures. He's not waiting on you to say the magic words. He's not waiting on you to get your act together. He's just saying, here, put your hand of faith on the doorknob of your heart and just open it. And welcome me in. He says to anyone who does this, I will come in. And we'll eat together. He doesn't say, I will come in and I'm going to straighten you out. Or I'll come in and I'm going to shame you. Or I'll come in and I'm going to slap you about a bit. That's the devil. Jesus comes out of a gentle spirit. 
I'm lowly and gentle in heart, he says. Humble in heart. So he comes with this gentle, tender spirit of a shepherd. The reason some of you have never opened the door is because you're afraid he's going to come in and take it out on you. No more from that lie. Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, will come in and he will sit with you. You'll talk to him, he'll talk to you. That's it. He says, we'll eat together. Pour a glass of wine, break the bread, time together. I'll eat with you, you'll eat with me. Hmm. That's prayer. I mentioned at the outset, I confessed that I'm a prayer wimp. <clears throat> but did you notice I said I'm a recovering prayer wimp? I'm speaking from experience, church, when I say that prayer can be the greatest source of power for your life. My time of prayer is my time of power. And God has answered my prayer. And he has changed prayer from being a duty to a delight. My time of prayer is my favorite time of the day. Sometimes I wake up early and I go ahead and get out of bed because I can't wait to start. Who would have thought? I'm 58 years old. Look at me. I've never had more energy in my life. I'm really excited about getting old. Who would have thought? <laughs> Bring it on. Every day just brings me closer and closer to a new discovery about the heart of Jesus Christ. And he is so kind. And he is so gentle. And he's healing me of wounds I didn't know I had. Regrets? Of course I have them. But they land on the windshield of my heart like raindrops. And here comes the windshield wiper of prayer. They don't stick. Anxieties and fears? Not really. I mean, a few. I still got more deadlines than I've ever had. I still travel more than I've ever traveled. And yet I feel this energy. More than I had when I was 21. How sweet Jesus is. Here's what I needed. I just needed somebody to help me. I needed somebody to give me a tool. I know not all of you need this, but some of us need a tool, something to help us. When the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray, you know what Jesus gave them? Anybody? A prayer. The Lord's Prayer. He didn't give them a lecture on prayer. He didn't give them an explanation about prayer. He didn't give them a 15-week series on prayer. <laughs> but he just said, here, try this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom. Just live with this, he said. I'd like to do the same. I'd like to give you a prayer. I think all the prayers of the Bible can be reduced to one sentence. <laughs> Work with me now. I think all the prayers of the Bible, I know they're everywhere. But I think all of them can be reduced down to one portable, pocket size, memorizable phrase. Here it is. God, you're good. I need help. So do they. Thank you. God, you're good. You're just good. That's where prayer starts. With the goodness of God. And because God is good, I can come to God and say, God, I need help. I need you to heal me, to encourage me, to lead me, and to pardon me. I need help. And so do they, my loved ones. And then those I don't love. In this hurting, hurting world. Thank you. 
that bookmark that you received as you came in, it has that prayer on it. And it takes that phrase, God, you are good, I need help, so do they, thanks. And it unpacks it just a little bit more. And over the next few weeks, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take that prayer one phrase at a time, and we're just going to live with it. And I want to challenge you. I want to encourage you. I want to welcome you into this exciting adventure of prayer. As I was waiting on the Lord on Friday morning, I asked him, I said, Jesus, what do you want to give your church? I knew he would give because he's good. He's a good giver. And just as the Father loves to give, so our Lord Jesus loves to give. And so I said, Lord, do you have a gift you'd like to give your church during this sermon series? And here's the word he gave me. Newness. Newness. Receive that today. God wants to give newness to your heart. Newness to your marriage. Newness to your faith, to your vitality, to your future, to your body. Newness. Bring it, Lord. Bring newness. Can I encourage you to clear your calendar every weekend over the next 15 weeks? Be here every Sunday. You got any trips planned? Just cancel them. No, I'm just kidding. Watch online. Don't miss a weekend. Don't miss a weekend. Can I encourage you to come early? Can I encourage you to come prayed up? Come expecting? Can I encourage you to stay late? To linger and relish every word all the way through the very end of the assembly of what Jesus might have to say to you. And can I encourage you just to take a few minutes every day? Just 10 minutes. Just 10 minutes. About the same amount of time it takes to eat a bowl of cereal. And just find, you pick the time of day, you pick the place. I don't have, you, you do what works for you. Late at night, early in the morning, you pick the time and place. But just get over in the corner, go, go somewhere out of, outside. You go what works for you and you just say, God, you're good. And just meditate on each of these phrases for just a few moments. And I have a hunch that you're about to find out that something wonderful happens. When you reach out and you place the hand of faith on the doorknob of your heart and you say, oh, Lord Jesus, come in. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Even now, we, we just open the doors of our hearts. We're sorry we've kept you at arm's length. We're sorry that you've knocked for so long and we, for whatever reason, didn't open the door. Lord, today, today we do. We open it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Come on in. Make yourself at home in our hearts. Do the work that only you can do. This work of healing and helping and encouragement. Just come in, Lord. Oh, how we need you. And oh, how we welcome you. Through Jesus we pray. Amen.